Okay, so I'm gonna try to um, show you how you would do it with larger stones. Like um, in this case, I've got these, this um, Amazonite nugget strand and some pewter. And for this, because it's a bigger stone and the holes are bigger, um, I'm gonna be using this waxed nylon cord. And a lot of you have seen um, the strands I do on silk with the gemstones. And I'm gonna show you how I do that also. So if you're, so if you're using a silk strand, I like to use a size six steel crochet hook. And size six means a lot of different things. Uh, depending on the brand you're using. This particular size six is a 1.6 millimeter hook. And you, I probably wouldn't go smaller than that because it tends to split my silk in half, but you could go um, a little bit bigger. Like if you had a size five or a size four steel hook, that would work too. And I take my silk, this is size F silk. So it's a little bit heavier than the real thin stuff. And for a regular um, 16 to 18 inch necklace, I measure off three, I, will, I like to have three yards to make the necklace. And since I wanna use this doubled, because it's I like this thicker look, and you don't have to use it doubled. You could use it singly also. So singly, you need three yards. Doubled, you need six yards. And I pull the length off, take either a collapsible eye wire needle, which is really the best because they're thinner, or a big eye needle, and I center my silk, my six yards if I'm doing it doubled, on my needle. So I've got six yards split in the center with my needle, so three yards on each half. Let me get it started here for you so I can show you that. So you can, anybody that's doing that can start stringing. And six yards is overkill. After you do it a few times, I really, technically, I only need about um, four and a half yards to make this. But if your stitches are bigger than mine, there's a lot of little tiny stitches. Um, you might need the full three yards technically in each direction. All right, so, so I've got my, my thread on my needle, or my silk in this instance, on my needle, and I've got it doubled, and I'm just gonna cut carefully, because I don't want these gemstones to fall off, because it's a pain in the butt to pick them up one at a time. So I'm gonna clip my end, and a few fall off at first, but I can't really help that. And I take my fingers, my index and my thumb finger, I don't know if you can see this, and I slide them off together between my thumb and my first finger. So I have a whole line of them pinched together. And then I take my needle and I push it through that whole group. And I got all but one on which is pretty good. And then keep pulling them down. Get that? That that will save you a great deal of time. And A, once they're off that strand, it's hard to figure out where the heck the hole is because they're so tiny. And actually, I guess I had six at a time, which is a little much. So I probably recommend three at a time as you pull them off and pinch them between your fingers and then push your needle through that line and push them all on at the same time because it's easy to find the hole if you just go directly through. Now I've got, a, I've got one that's not wanting to go through. So have a pair of pliers handy so that you can wiggle the, hold on to your needle and wiggle those guys down onto the silk if you have one that's resistant. If it's too resistant, take it off and set it to the side. Um, 
Or if you're using a big eye needle, which I am, like I said, the twisted eye needles are a lot thinner. Um, switch to, take it out and switch to a twistable, a twisted eye, twisted wire needle because those are smaller and it'll probably go through. Okay, so people that are doing that, continue to string all your beads. All right, let me set this aside and then I'll show you how we're gonna do it with the heavier cord. Okay, so I do it a little bit differently if I'm using something larger, like these Amazonites. And I've got some, some pewter beads thrown on my mat. I like them kind of intermingled when I do them. So let me move my garnets over here. And I've got this wax nylon, and this is a little bit bigger than the s -Lon. So depending on your hole size, you might need, I think the regular s -Lon, the regular size is called um, 170, and that's like a half a millimeter. And then they make a finer one that's called Tex 135, and that's um, like, 0.3 millimeters and then there's a heavier one which is what I buy in these big wax spools. These are um, like Tex 210 and they're 0.8 millimeters. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sharpen my end with some beeswax. So I take my thumb over my beeswax cake and I want to coat about, what is that, about five inches on one end with a lot of wax. So I put my thumb on the wax and I keep pulling this tail through over and over and over again until I get a bunch of wax on it. And I know it's already waxed, but you need a lot of wax to harden it. And if you're using the s -Lon that doesn't have wax on it, then, you know, of course you need a lot of wax too. So just kept, keep pulling it through until you get a bunch of wax on your cord. I'm gonna grab the end here, and it helps if you have something to clip. So I've got the very tip with my pliers. And it's nice if you have someone to hold the other end for you. My someone just left the building, looks like. So I'm gonna wrap it. I'm just gonna wrap the other end of my cord here around my light so that it holds it nice and taut for me. I'm gonna take my lighter, and the goal is to heat with my lighter underneath this cord to melt that wax and just the surface layer of nylon to make this a hard needle without melting through the nylon. And sometimes that can take some practice. So don't be discouraged if you keep melting it. So I've got my lighter right underneath, and if you do this, it's hard to see, I'm sure, on camera, but you can see everything get really shiny when you have it just at the right temperature to start melting the wax in the surface of the nylon, and it's kind of smoking here. Okay, and I'm gonna just continue to hold that taut for a minute while it cools down. And then I'm gonna clip myself a really sharp end here. All right and unhook it from my light, which you can't see. Okay, and now, see how I'm not, I'm not even holding on to the other end of it. See how I have a really sharp? And another trick, I like to spin um, the cord, the direction of the ply to make the plies, almost like screwing it into the bead. That makes it smaller and smaller and um, keeps the plies from splitting apart. Okay. And I think in general, the crochet strands look the best if you use cord that is approximately the same size as the hole in the bead. There's something about the proportion that looks better when it's crocheted. They look like they fit together instead of this little tiny string coming out of these 
bigger beads. And I would say the, the size between this cord and these nuggets is just about even. We're gonna start the same way, regardless of what material we're using. I just went and grabbed for the nylon um, a size one hook. I like either size one or two for the nylon. And this brand in a size one is a 2.35 millimeter. So anything around two millimeters is good for the, the heavier nylon. And you don't need to leave a long tail, but you need to leave enough of the, a tail to do your finish work, whether that's gonna be crimping ends on or tying a knot. So I usually leave at least six inches because that's enough for me to thread through a cap or tie a knot either way. And I'm gonna make a slip knot, which is simply a loop around your finger and then you bring the cord in your hand behind the loop and take your hook and pull the cord through while you tighten the the knot okay everybody got that now you're gonna want to kind of give yourself some room by pulling your beads down a little bit away from where your hook's attached. And everybody's different how they like to hold cord. You can simply just let it lay in your hand and bring it over your index finger if you want, but you do need a little bit of tension. And it's not like crocheting with yarn where you can have your hand all the way out here and, and just and not even hold on to your stitches. You, you do with this thin stuff, if you've ever done doilies or any crochet with tiny thread, you've got to hold things much closer. So my finger is very close to my hook and I'm gonna use my index finger to hold on to this slip knot and my work so that it doesn't move. And I'm gonna just take my needle and swoop it under to grab the thread. You want me to hold it up closer? So all I did was I took my hook and I rotated it under the thread. And this is called a yarn over. That's what lays the thread over the top of my hook. And I do that while I'm holding onto this knot here so it stays put. Otherwise, right, it would just undo. So again, hold my index finger on the loop on my hook and then just come underneath the thread that I've got laying across my finger. Now with my finger still on my stitch on the hook, I'm gonna grab this initial loop that's on my hook with my thumb and my index finger so that I hold onto it so that I can grab that thread and pull it through the loop. And I've got so much wax on here. Let me make that stitch a little bit bigger. There we go. Did everybody get that? That's a chain. So I'm gonna do it again. Finger on the stitch on my hook, come under so that it goes over the top of my hook, grab what I've crocheted already and pull my needle down and through the loop on my hook. That's a chain. And I'm gonna keep doing that for, I like to have a minimum of an inch. Now, if you, this is what I was talking about earlier. If you want your necklace longer, this is gonna be at the back next to your clasp. This header, before you start adding stitches, can be as long as you want it to be. So if I want to just use a half a strand of beads, which I call um, an eight inch strand, and have a longer necklace, I just crochet a little bit more without beads here at the back. So again, I'm holding with my finger 
so this doesn't swing around. You have to keep moving your beads down, by the way. I'm holding the stitch with my finger. I've got the thread in my hand going over my index finger, so I have some tension on it. While I'm holding the stitch, I swing my needle under to lay the yarn over the hook. I hold right underneath my stitch on my hook while I grab that thread and pull it through. So I'm taking my needle and I'm, just like when you normally crochet, I'm rotating it under after I grab that thread so it won't fall off my hook. See how my needle has gone from here to here so that it hooks it and I pull it through. So I have, I've got about two inches now worth of just plain stain chain stitches like I will call a header. And if you're using silk, yours are probably a lot smaller. The key is this finger right here, the more tension you put on this thread going over your finger, the smaller this loop gets on your hook. And it's really hard then to pull through a chain. So make sure if you, basically if you grab your work from underneath with your fingers when you pull it through you're not putting if this is loose across your finger you're not putting any tension on it so it's real easy to pull it through the loop if this finger is pulling then the tension is going to be really tight and it's hard to pull your loop through i usually slide up um I don't know, five or six beads up my thread so I don't have to lose my grip every time I wanna add a bead. I go ahead and slide a bunch up and then pull them back in my hand and leave one next to my hook and then grab my thread again. So let me show you my hands. Does everybody see this? So I pulled a bunch of beads up, put one next to my hook and I put the rest of them in my hand and then put my finger underneath like always. So I've got, I've got them right here handy as I continue to add beads so I don't have to drop my thread every time I need a bead, pull one up and then pick my thread back up again. That's personal preference. It might be very cumbersome for you at the beginning. So if you can only slide one bead up at a time, no worries. So to, to chain a bead, you want it right next to your hook now I want you to pretend, like, try not to get concerned about the fact that it's there. Make sure that the loop on your hook is as tall. I'm going to lay it this way so you can see what I mean. You want that loop to be as big as your bead. If you have a little tiny hoop loop and crochet your bead behind it, that's going to make your bead pop out of the fabric. If you look at these garnets that I did earlier, see how they lay right on top of the silk. I, I would say in line with the silk. If I made these and see how big my stitches are behind each bead, each of my chain stitches are about the same height as the bead. So the bead lays right in the fabric. If I pulled these loops small, what would happen is it would undercut the length of the bead and I'd have all these little popcorn guys poking out, jabbing everywhere instead of laying in a nice row. So as you crochet with beads, you need to make sure this loop is never smaller than the height of your bead. That loop, make yeah. sure it's the same as your bead. Bring your hook underneath to do your yarn over as always and grab the bead and your stitching with your thumb and your first finger. Sorry, I was too high there. And me and make your chain. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And then for for this pattern, you know, and believe me, you can change this. You can put as many as you want. You can we can just keep chaining beads without any space, but we won't have a 16-inch necklace. To get a 16 inch necklace out of the strand, I need to put a blank chain stitch in between every one. So I just did another chain stitch without a bead on it. Right behind the one with the bead, just like you did at the beginning, okay? 
And then I'm going to pull another bead up, put it next to my hook, and again, I'm pulling the thread over my hook, holding on to the bead and my work, and rotating my hook so that I pull up another chain. All right. And do it correctly. This is a long bead, so I'm going to elongate the stitch to be the same size as this big bead. Do my yarn over, hold on to it so it doesn't draw up. See the difference? Yeah. So you need this little hammock behind your bead to be the size of your bead, not little, or it's not going to lay right. Get it? So I've got that big guy on. I'm going to do one blank in between and then slide up another big one. Make my loop long enough to hold on to it and do my chain. And then do my blank. So these are going to be spaced apart like so. Okay, so I've got, let's see here. Looks like I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen big stones on. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve left. So I'm going to pop one out so that I've got thirteen now on each side. And I'm going to call this the I've got some kind of, I should have done these in fives instead of four because I'm not going to end up in the center here. Um, <laughs> maybe just so it looks like I am, I'm going to pop this one out too so that I've got two on either side of my pendant in the middle. There we go. And I'm going to elongate this last loop and take my hook out and then I'm going to thread the loop through the pendant and pull the thread back up and I'm going to chain stitch him in place. Everybody see that? Do you want me to do it again? Yeah, would you? Yeah, okay. So, this was the, the last bead that I chained in place. And, oh, actually, I forgot to do a blank in between. Let me do my blank. I'm going to elongate that last loop so that I have a big cord here that I can pass through the hole on my pendant. And then I'm going to take my hook and put it back in that loop and draw it up so that it's no longer than the length of my bail. And I'm going to make a chain around it. And then I'm going to do a blank like before and see how my pendant's going to be crocheted right into the chain. And let me pull up a bead. Okay, there. So now I've got my pendant stitched right into the necklace in the center. Everybody get that? Okay. So let me real quick. Get this finished. So I've got this strand made and I am way off center. Not sure exactly what happened there, but sometimes it happens. Probably because these beads are all different sizes. Let me show you how I know I'm off center here. Look at how far off I am. And I counted the beads too, but because they're all different sizes, it didn't work out that I was centered. So, 
I'm gonna, I know how much thread I'm gonna need to finish because I want it this length. So remember to add extra thread for making this chain. If you're centered, you can just go ahead and do the blank crochets at the end so it matches the other side. But I'm just gonna pop these out back to here. We put this hook in so I don't lose anything. I'm going to slide off the extra green beads and I want to end it with three of the pewter ones. So I'm going to put three pewter back on and this is what I was saying about not cutting off your needle. Um, for the people that are using silk, if you don't have a needle on this end, you can't take beads and on and off to fix symmetry because you don't have a needle anymore. And if you thread the needle on your doubled silk, it's gonna to be too thick. So now I've got those popped off. So I can go back and just do my pewter at the end. So my necklace is symmetrical. And remember, I, I also said, you know, what if this is way too long when you end up and you want to make it shorter? Well, I've got all this that I can pick out and pop these loops off to make it shorter at the beginning if I want to. That's why I kind of like to have at least two inches to play with. And then if I decide, you know what, I only needed an inch. Let me put an inch on here. And that's an inch. And on my last stitch, I'm going to pull the cord all the way through that crochet that I made. So the end pops out and give it a tug so it's knotted. So that's how I'm going to finish it. And then here, Let's finish the end of our crochet piece. Uh, my video cut off before I was finished doing the necklace that I was showing you. So I just crocheted a little bit of cord here to show you how you would knot it off if you didn't want to use the caps. So picture these, this is the end with my beads on it and this is my tail. I have a long tail left here, but you really only need about six inches to finish it. And I've got a closed ring. This could be a decorative ring if you wanted also, or it could be the ring on the edge of a, a charm even, um, or a link if you wanted to knot this to the center of a piece. So I'm just passing the tail through that ring and folding it back down. And if you notice, I'm leaving almost no room between this end of my ring and my first crochet stitch. And I'm gonna use one of these large eye needles. This is a tapestry needle, it's a number 16. Um, you could use anything that has a hole large enough to thread your tail through. And I wanna orient the eye of the needle away from the necklace, so opposite direction of where my beads are. And I'm gonna take the tail that I've passed through the ring and I'm gonna wrap it around the necklace and the needle, nice and tight. And I'm wrapping three times. Let me scooch him up a little bit. Around both my work and the needle. And I'm wrapping, if you notice, I wrap towards the necklace, go in this direction. You don't want those wraps to overlap in any way, and you want them to stay tight. That's going to determine how much slack you end up having between your ring and your crochet. So I've got this pulled up tight. I'm going to pinch those wraps around the needle in my fingers while I pass the tail through the eye of the needle. And I just need about an inch of the tail going through because I want enough slack that when I pull it through, I've got cord to pull through. And because I'm holding it tight, 
<clears throat> excuse me, this is going to be tough to pull through. So I like to take a pair of flat nose pliers here and get it through there. And I'm going to continue now to pull that tail through nice and tight. There we go. So I've got a wrapped knot here on the end of my piece that's very secure. So I pull it up as tight as I can. At this point, you can take your hypo cement and take that, that little end there and shove it inside the knot to put a little glue in there. And that's just for extra protection because we are going to cut this and melt it, which is another reason I really like using synthetic fibers like this polyester or nylon because we don't have to deal with all this fringe and it doesn't rot over time like a natural fiber does. So I'm going to clip this off, leaving about a 3 8 inch tail, and I'm going to pull my work completely away from that little tail. And I'm going to use a lighter and I'm going to melt it. And as it draws back and becomes molten, I'm going to take my finger and tap it into the knot to seal it. So here we go. So I'm going to let that melt back. Sometimes it catches on fire like it did there. And you have to be pretty quick because you want to tap that in while it's still molten. And it sets up pretty quick. So there I have finished my work with the wrapped knot and sealed the tail so that's never coming out. And from here you can um, attach your clasp or you can uh, knot a piece of leather around this if you want an adjustable back on it and do some sliding knots or however you wish um, to end your work. Thanks for joining us and please take a look at all of our kits and tutorials at pumpkinglass.com and we have a lot of free tutorials at Pumpkin Glass Gallery's YouTube page. So long.